we're watching the movie. I'm enjoying the fuck out of it, but at the same time, I'm a little bit on at the edge of my seat because I'm a little bit scared that uh, the guy next to us is crazy because he's cackling like the Joker, and it kind of made me feel a little bit weird about that because I'm like, I kept looking over. I'm like, is this guy gonna shoot up the place? He he just scared me. It was just a little like, you know, you know me. You see something, say something. I was a little, <laughs> I was a little close. I was a little close to going. Uh, Full bringing Freddy attention. Yeah, I was about to. If you see something, Fred something. What? <laughs> <laughs> you ready for Freddy? <laughs> now that's a fucking bong hit. No, you could do. I just want to capture this this moment in time of you sucking down sugar free lollipops. <laughs> yeah. All right, bro. Well, I mean, I don't know. You're the one that went out of his way to find sugar free lollipops. Yeah. Yeah. I've never Sammy seen is anything, the fucking. Anyone but a freaking OnlyFans girl. Like Yo, that is. It is funny how that is such a weird. Uh, what's it called? Like group of people that do that is just the only fans girls it's like a lollipop aspect of it or like the streamer girls that have those um like cat ears as headphones oh yeah oh yeah yeah. it's such a weird it's such a weird thing i don't i've never understood why it is but it seems to be very popular in that community i don't watch those kind of things Oh, okay. So you're never on Instagram or at all. That's pretty cool, I guess. No, I changed, dude. My Instagram, my algorithm is all traveling, UFC, and uh, animals. Damn, dude, you're like so cool. I had to change it. <laughs> Would you it get was in, bad. In trouble by your wife or what? No, I just had to do uh, collateral damage before it happened. Kind of like Minority <laughs> Report. <laughs> <laughs> by, by the way, Sammy, I just want to say fuck you first off, um, because you're the one that you're, you're the dental hygienist expert. You're the one that told me always do sugar free candy, sugar free gum, and now you're making fun of me for sucking on the sugar free lollipop. No, so go fuck yourself. That's not. No, I'm proud of you for going sugar free. No, you're a fucking. You're a fucking hypocrite, dude. <laughs> no, it's just weird that you you're went, a hypocrite. It's just like, oh, I'm gonna find myself a sugar free dildo. Like, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> Who sucks on a fucking yeah. lollipop? the fuck out of here Fred I gotta go with Sammy on this one man it's kind of bizarre I just don't I don't like I don't think I ever chose for a lollipop (laughs) especially at my at our age (laughs) I like the phrase yeah. jonesing. I like jones. I never jones for a lollipop. Like that. <laughs> it's very fitting for this conversation. Uh, I can really, yeah. I can, I'm really jonesing for a, a sugar-free pop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> well, I got myself into um, this little addiction I got going on with um, Jolly Ranchers. The sucking shit? Yeah. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. Oh, my just God. Putting, putting hey, sweets yo. in my mouth. Uh-huh. And uh, Jolly Ranchers have a lot of sugar, and that little fucking Jolly Rancher has a lot of calories. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to listen to my boy Sammy. And I went to Amazon, and I found me some sugar-free Jolly Ranchers. Along the way, I found me sugar-free lollipops. Uh, this lollipop was on Shark Tank. Um, <laughs> I it, can't it, believe it, you did research. <laughs> On this dude, it, you, you know how you know how Amazon will push shit on you with a little, you know, chosen by Amazon or Amazon favorite, and then yeah. I I clicked on it and it had a thing of a little girl presenting the lollipops to Shark Tank and how it's not only sugar free but it also has something about pH. It balances your pH levels on to reduce calories <laughs> to reduce to reduce <laughs> yeast infections. You fucking homo. Uh, uh, well, I'm yeast. I'm yeast free, bitch. You and your dirty pussy, okay? <laughs> My pussy's clean. Yeah. Freddie, I gotta, I gotta ask though. When you say it balances out your pH, 
What does that act, do you actually know what that means, or have you just heard other people say we're so, you're supposed to do that? So like, well, because I have a pool, I know about <laughs> your pH fucking <laughs> pH levels. Okay. Oh, so a pool makes you a expert on <laughs> your human body? Just ask. I don't know. Maybe it does. Just hey, fuck you guys. I I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to look up the fucking. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm sure it's true. I just I don't know if that those two things equate to the same thing. It's just funny how he's like. <laughs> I just like he's like dude like, fucking Joe Rogan over here, Jose Rogan over here. <laughs> I'll show you uh, these. These are some good lollipops. They, you know what? I even told Lizzie. You know what? I, I told Lizzie. I'm like, you know, we gotta promote stuff we like, and I think maybe we should reach out for them to sponsor us. <laughs> you should send them. You should send them these first five minutes, man. They'll probably love it. <laughs> I don't even know the name of the. Oh, here it is. Oh, but you know the little girl that presented them in the pH level and that they're sugar free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know this podcast was going to be about roast Freddy sucking habits. I mean, you started it, bro. I don't know what to tell you, man. You come in with a lollipop, like <laughs> wild shit. Let's see. I can you I see mean, the screen? Come on. You see the screen? Zolly. Yeah. That's the name. Is their new sponsor, ladies and gentlemen? Zolly, the sugar-free lollipop that doesn't hurt your teeth and it brings a joy to your face. Use uh, and it balances your pH levels. Use code uh, TFTI for ten percent off. That's right. See, we are what we're doing here is we're manifesting right now. Okay. Can you guys see the screen? Yeah. All right. Let me see if I could play this in here. Right. I mean, we're definitely gonna get pulled if they play this. It cleans your fucking teeth, bro. I mean, no. F F Fox News. Steve Harvey. Uh. Shout out to Lena Morris. Look at her. She's a hustler, bro. Yeah. She Go fuck like yourselves. She... Damn, she she really wrote my hustle in <laughs> the her warehouse. Whitest thing I've ever seen, <laughs> dude. I mean, I I mean, it, I'm embarrassed. It worked though. I like it got pretty. <laughs> I guess, man. But that means somebody had to come in and write my hustle. Not just that. It says whistle. My hustle whistle. What the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that sounds Damn, a little weird. Dude, that warehouse sounds awful to work in. Yeah. Some, can you imagine a 14 year old? coming into your job and telling you what to do how much that yeah. would suck i'd be like i mean i don't know lady i just worked 17 hours can you like i don't know go get a go get a boyfriend or something and stop <laughs> you know what this you know what she might be she might be one of those uh girls like rich kids that their parents said all right for a summer project you're gonna start your own business for or sure maybe she's and just then, the face of it and somebody else invented it and they're like no one's gonna Shark Tank's not going to resist this 14 year old girl that gets yeast infections all the time. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that last part was unnecessary. Yeah, yeah but funny. <laughs> but funny. <laughs> Look, um, we've seen this before. Uh, like uh, a kid comic who's, who's their parent is a failed comic, so they write <laughs> jokes for their kids. Damn, that. One sucks. time in Reno, yeah, when I started in Reno, uh, there was a kid, I think he was the host, right, Sammy? Host feature? I think so, yeah. Do you remember that kid? Yeah. And there I am, uh, uh, fucking eating dog shit on stage, and then this kid comes out and just kills, and his dad used to be a comic. And that kind of shit happens. I bet you the dad wrote this fucking commercial, all that stuff for the girl. Probably. And, uh, maybe shit. the dad's a dentist. <laughs> Damn. You like my teeth? Mm hmm I can't see your, your, your frozen. You really have to brush. It's such a weird. I don't know, man. That sounds wild that you have to brush. Like, how does it clean your teeth? There's got to be the most wild chemicals in that. that you know what it is? It's, just, um, it's uh, xylitol. 
Xylitol. Xylitol is what's used in a lot of um, fucking toothpastes and um, like uh, mouthwashes. Xylitol is like very healthy for your mouth. It's what they use for people who don't um, can't produce saliva and shit. Um, mm, mm. And it's and it's uh, <clears throat> an alternative to sugar as well. Really, you pieces of shit! I'm gonna send you guys some of these. So, Sammy, is, is your like wife? A dental hygienist? No, she's a dental no, assistant. You're... Oh, okay. Sammy used to be a fucking in the dental field for a long ass time. Yeah, so for, for like sixteen years, maybe. Damn, that's why your teeth are so white. They're breaking. Yeah. I just thought it. I just thought mm-hmm. it was because you were Mexican. I'm really dark. <laughs> yeah. Cute. Dude, um, <laughs> Sammy has pretty good. Pretty good. No, he does. I, He's... Yeah, they're nice. Do you have any like fillings or cavities or anything? Yeah, Sammy? yeah, I had fillings. I had the fucking. I was a little gray. What are those silver tooth monster kids, bro? Damn. Oh, I used to have that when I was a kid. Yeah. 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 I had. I, I had all my molars. They were all like silver. Oh, are they? Yeah. All yeah, the yeah. back ones. Yeah, all the back ones. Okay, just... so here it is. So xylitol, you said xylitol. It's That's why it's called Zolly. Damn, Maybe. she... Starts with the next, though, huh? So here it is. See? Shut out. You're on keto. That's you, Sammy. Keto. And then vegan. The That's you, Colin. <laughs> Wait, but where's the ingredients? Let's see. Yeah, but then you gotta suck on lollipops all day. Fuck yeah. There you go. Where's the ingredients, though? Uh, it's not showing it on this one. But I'm, I'm sure I could find one right now. You guys never liked lollipops? You guys are... I like lollipops, but I've never seen a grown man suck on them on camera. Like, oh, yeah, see, xylitol. Um, like, xylitol. Like, yeah. like porn girls do or like cute girls that are on their fucking, you know, <laughs> paid streams and shit. I, look, here's the ingredients. You see it? Yeah. Oh, shit. So can you can you read that? Isomalt syrup, citric acid, ribby root juice, red beet, ribby. <laughs> <laughs> like a fucking frog. Like a ribbit. <laughs> ribbit, ribbit. Oh stevia, fuck yeah! I knew I liked the taste. Fuck yeah, dude. Zolly pops, ladies and gentlemen. This episode is brought to you by Zolly pops. Only seven thirty nine. Get yourself a five point two ounce. There you go, guys. Bro, you're such a sucker. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's good. So, um, before I hit record, Colin, you said you were asking, are we going to do, like, are we going to kind of tell the story? Because today, for the people that just, um, they're on this episode, and you didn't read the title, that's kind of weird, but you should know that we're talking about the king of comedy today yeah so uh what is it called um were you, spoiler alert <laughs> yeah oh yeah spoiler alert so if you haven't seen the movie i recommend you um go watch the movie then come back or, or just enjoy it you know you might just watch the podcast and then go watch the movie and now you'll see certain things that we talked about instead of watching it. You know, because like what what I said last time, every time I watch Pulp Fiction, I see something new. Um, uh, any movie. So I kind of enjoy say, yeah. when when I hear somebody spoil it or talk about something that I haven't seen. Mm-hmm. And then when I'm, I picture it, and then when I watch it, it can either be the way I pictured it or totally different. But I know that's the part they were talking about. And that kind of makes yeah. it fun a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's it's uh it's one of the things i like um so what you guys think should we just what do you think colin what are we thinking of uh kind of go going about reviewing this movie today the comedian the king of comedy came out in 1982 in film festivals then in america in 1983 i can't hear you oh yeah holy shit no wonder how about how about now? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, I mean, you gave all the backstory about it. 
I was going to say drop a little history about it when it came out and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that... Mine's, mine's Scorsese, the director. Not his first time working with Robert De Niro. He worked with him on uh, Taxi Driver, I believe, Which, right? Yeah, and yeah, uh, kind of... And the Irishman. What a suck fest that was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. No, but this was this was a good movie, man. I really enjoyed it. It was... Uh, I was tell I was telling, I think Freddie bef- when Sammy left for a second. Um, the the comparison to that and Taxi Driver, Joker that just came out, and The King of Comedy is unbelievably similar. It was kind of wild how similar they all three. And then you find out the director of Joker, which I can't remember his name offhand, Todd Phillips, I think. Yeah, Todd mm-hmm. Phillips. He was like he pulled a lot of inspiration from from that. By the way, some like a theme. If you guys have noticed this already, movies directors art tends to copy a lot of other art. Oh yeah, yeah. What is, what is that thing? <clears throat> uh, still like an artist. Oh no, I don't know. That, I think that's what. I think art they were interpreting think- art. I think I think you're going for life imitates reality. I think you're talking. Yeah, or, I think yeah. Was, art so I art imitates do. reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Art imitates reality. Um, kind of. I'll tell you why. Um, Joker came out in 2020, like in the beginning, towards the end of no, 2019. No, no, no. It was it was before that, right? <laughs> Twenty. I don't yeah, know why. Was, tw- oh, the Joker. My fault. You're right. 2019. You're right. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's so what happened? What happened six months later? At, you know, at the end of the Joker, you see fucking riots, and then fucking civil so I, unrest. I felt like that the Joker was more on like. Do you guys remember the one percent protests at all? Is that- they had them in New York and like a lot of the East Coast, like the big the coast. Oh, oh, when the Tea Party. <laughs> Yeah, like the beginning yeah. of that. Yeah. That I felt like that was more. I didn't talk about that personally, but I mean, you can claim every anybody's angry for any reason, and that's why they protested. Not that that's every reason everybody protests, but right. It was interesting watch like watching the Joker again. How people just found reasons to protest rather than. The actual reason. I think that's what every mm-hmm. that's what happens right now with everything else. Cancel culture. It's not even fucking about canceling. It's just about jumping on board with what everybody else is fucking doing and trying to seem cool and shit. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That. Uh, yeah. No. That's exactly how I felt watching that movie again. I was like, damn, that really is the interpretation. That, exactly, Sammy. That is exactly what's going on right now. People are just claiming something, and then it's actually about something else, and it's actually about this, it's actually about that, and you're like, well, the, you guys are just complaining because it's fashionable, yeah. rather than actually complaining about something. I know, I, I know it got me, it tricked me into it, because I remember thinking like, you know, like, oh, I need to jump on that, I need to be a fucking white knight and shit, and then I'm thinking like, I don't even fucking really believe, it. I mean, you know, don't, it... <laughs> In certain issues, you know, where I'm just like, I just don't fucking see why this person's getting canceled or shit, you know. Like, like Harvey yeah. Weinstein, let like let him out of jail, bro. Like, like fucking, what's the dude who died with the island? Like, don't agree with any of it. Let him fucking live his life. And I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, Sammy's got some yeah. wild thoughts, bro. Like, I'm just fucking with you. No, no, no. Like, I Sammy know. has <laughs> great advice on dental uh, hygiene. Damn, can you imagine your teeth cleaned and then he's like, man, I just don't understand it, man. Like, let Epstein do that shit, bro. I don't even understand why. You're like, can you just clean my teeth and please let me leave? Like, I got you here for fucking 30 more minutes, bro. You're going to hear my thoughts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, dude. Well, you know how, um, you know, the whole thing about art stealing art. There's a there's a huge thing like Quentin Tarantino, for example. 
he admits, and it's not, there's nothing wrong in doing this when it comes to anything else other than stand up comedy is to be inspired uh, by like a scene. Like Reservoir Dogs, I think we mentioned it, it was inspired, like the whole movie was inspired by a scene in this Japanese or Korean movie about a heist. There's a lot of parts in Pulp Fiction that are inspired from other movies, and and it's okay. It, the problem is when it becomes plagiarism, right? When it's like exactly the same, and it's and um, you you don't give credit, or you just do a remake without saying it's a remake, but it is. Yeah. I guess. Do you find because comedy is so difficult, like good comedy is so difficult to do? Is that why people get? Because I think I agree with you. I think stealing someone's act is the grossest thing. I think that's why I don't. Carlos Mencia is just a just a plague on this art form. But that that is the only real art that people get really upset about when you really just steal it. And I, I don't like. I'm trying to find the right words. I don't know. But it's just interesting. It's just interesting that that's the one that everybody gets really c- comic and comic fans get really angry about more than anything else. Yeah, um, it's because it, comedy evolved. If if you study the history of comedy, it used to be uh, people would share acts. People would would have the same act in vaudeville and like you would travel the country with your 10, 20 minute set, whatever. And you would take from other comics. It was, it was acceptable back in the day to take bits from other people before it became the monologue that it is today. Kind of like the stand up talking about your own personal life. <clears throat> it used to be kind of like street jokes and then um, some slapstick and stuff like that, but somehow it evolved to the point where it was like, no, man, you can't be taking my shit anymore. I think television had a lot to do with that because if you're on the road doing an act, no one's watching this, a comedy special on TV, you know, you're going to see this guy come into your town and perform. The only way you're really going to be like, man, this guy's a hack is if the guy that came here the week before did the same exact act, right? Yeah. So I think that's part of... Oh, uh, Felipe Sparza, the winner of Last Comic Standing, he has a uh, a series on the history of comic, comedy called History for Fools, and he talks about that, about the whole evolution of when did they stop stealing from each other, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's it's very... Oh, it, it is very it's very cool seeing that you can't like you can have you can see influences like how a big J people you say he's like a tell but then right. he really grew into his own it's like well that's not it's not really a tell it I can see where you it's similar but it's not yeah and you have to know the real difference like how Chappelle was I mean really Woods. influenced by Tony Woods um, and uh Richard Pryor. Mm-hmm. And you have those, and you're like, holy shit. Like, if you watch early Chappelle, you're like, yeah, he's kind of doing a little bit of that, kind of mm-hmm. doing his own thing. And now he's off doing his own, doing his own totally different thing. Same thing with like, uh, Up and Covers used to be big. Uh, I mean, the, the political comic with uh, John Stewart. Now everybody wants to be a political comic. And you're like, no, I mean, you can't. He can do it because he's so good at it. Like yeah. Hicks, Hicks was so good at it. You're not gonna replicate that. Yeah. And when you do, you just you really look like a hack. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you're doing the same exact bits. Um, I think also back then <clears throat> there wasn't that many comics. Now it's like everybody's yeah. a comic. Yeah. Wow. It seems like the new. It really seems like the new thing that everybody is a comic. Yeah. yeah. Like now you're it's getting a, ugh. It's it's the is that thing that um anybody like people could any just anybody could be like, Oh, it's on my bucket list. Like it could be anybody from a doctor from and, a Uber <clears throat> driver. Go and ahead. just like this movie, bro, this movie 
there's people with delusions. God damn. I thought this movie was based on a couple of the open micers I know uh, <laughs> here in town. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. the delusions on this motherfucker. I mean, he did do good in the movie, you know, at the end. But oh. it was he was just he thought he was the shit and and I think that's the one thing too is that some people are just so delusional. They think just because they went on stage and told some jokes with confident, and even though nobody laughed, they think they fucking killed. You know? Yeah, man, it's crazy. Like, that it was just I'm gonna again spoilers already, but that ending that ending kind of little bit was bizarre to me. Yeah, it was. It was I, I did too. not see that coming at all. I couldn't tell if that was one of his delusions again or not. But it seemed like that's how the movie ended. That it wasn't his illusion. So, like <clears throat> the, the whole the whole thing is he, he kidnaps uh, Jerry, gets gets on stage, does his time. Gets off, brings him to Jerry, which they don't really even talk about because Jerry broke free. And then they say, oh, he got six years. He was let out in two and a half. And good then good behavior, which I don't even know how that's possible with his wacky ass. Yeah. And then is now on a tour making a movie, doing this and that. And you're like, man, is this a delusion or... I don't know. I don't know how you guys took it. I took it as I guess it's real, but I wasn't. There's a part of me that didn't well, think it was real. Let Let's back up, but let's definitely jump on that. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Let Let's. So, um, the movie is is pretty much based on the main character would be I would say Robert De Niro and Jerry, right? Rupert Pumpkin, and, if you can't remember that fucking name, so, told a million times. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a name. That would be a great... That's a great com comic name, too. That is a yeah. good... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so he's he's an aspiring comic, right? <clears throat> and I well, think this movie... Even, hold on, oh, doesn't even, I don't even think he is an aspiring comic. He, he In the movie, it just kind of seems like he's written stuff and he feels like he's ready for the big leagues. Well, yeah, he's I'm aspiring. Gonna... Doesn't make him a stand-up comic. Oh, I, okay. Never no, mind. Sorry. no, no. I took it like, I, like he, no, he I got you. stage time and shit. And, and no, and I was actually gonna touch on that because so he he's he's uh definitely he definitely wants to be a comic, but he doesn't understand that you got to have stage time. And and I love how when he gets into the car in the beginning of the movie, he jumps into uh, Jerry's car when a bunch of people are trying to get his attention, including Sandra Bernhard, uh, who's a real stand-up comic. Um, but in the movie, she's a crazy nut that's just obsessed with Jerry Lewis. Uh, I forgot his last name in the movie. But um, he jumps in the car, and Jerry, I, I really love how he kind of, he's calm he doesn't just tell him get off he he right away he knows he's dealing with a crazy person yeah and he kind of gives him comedy advice i'm like oh that's some good advice you know like tell him like anybody that's listening to this that wants to be a comic you got to rehearse it you got to go try it out but you're right sammy he never really in the movie at least we never see that happen as opposed to the joker you see the joker go on at an open mic and just eat shit but yeah uh robert de niro is kind of like trying to jump through the hoops not realizing that there's a long way to this whole thing yeah yeah man that's it is it, it seemed like that the whole time like i was thinking they were going to show some point of him doing stand up in front of people and not just his wall of people which is <laughs> well i think they even crazy. mention it they mention it when the the uh, assistant comes out and says where have you performed and he's I think he says nowhere. He's just like, you know, I just have my know my material is good, and it's just like, what? Wow, what? Shit. And boy, was it! <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> I know I'm just jumping ahead now, but uh, since you mentioned it, that he did good, he killed. He did good. Good set. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, even started my stopwatch. It, it, he almost did five minutes in the movie. Yeah. yeah, but five minutes of just hacky bullshit. Yeah, now it's hacky though. Back then, I, yeah, yeah, I don't... yeah, I guess so. Yeah, now it's hacky, yeah. but like, um, to give an introduction, if you're like to say where you're from and kind of that right there is still the formula, you know, on stage, um, you talk about yourself. Not everybody gives an introduction and talk about 
themselves. Some people are just one liners and they just jump into the jokes, but almost even like we have a friend named Quindell. He's a one liner comic and he, a lot of his one liners are about his life. He kind of, yeah. so you, you get to know about, about him. So he, you see Robert De Niro starts off by saying where he's from about talk about his mother, his mother's addiction. Um, I like how there's fake things. Like he said, his mother was dead when she wasn't. Yeah. Uh, oh, see, I in, thought in she set. was dead. Man, no, I took well, it as like a lot of illusion. Like he was crazy. I don't know. Man. I took it as he was crazy. Yeah. Well, he was living in the basement of his mom's. Um, <clears throat> he's definitely crazy. <laughs> he's definitely crazy. But that, you're right, though. There's some parts that it's kind of hard to be able to tell what's an what's an illusion and what's real right like, yeah those I, are really <clears throat> go ahead sammy no go ahead bro go ahead no so just, i just took it as like he you, you can't tell i mean that was the great thing about the movie is you couldn't tell like initially i was like oh she must be alive and then after the act i was like oh maybe it's like a a psycho thing where mm. he's having these kind of yeah fritz and he's not really She's not really there, but he's having these freakouts. That's a good again, point, bro. I didn't even see it that way. That's interesting. Yeah, right to, to, yeah. To me, it felt like she was alive because I felt like they, he was the director was trying to establish that he was going through these manic episodes when he's like having dinner with Jerry, and then all of a sudden the mom starts yelling him his name out, and it's just like, oh this you know he's letting you know that he's oh, having a fucking illusion so to me every time i would hear her voice a real bag real bird i'm like oh mm. shit that he's had because at first i was like i don't know what the fuck is going on is he really having dinner with these fools or is he like crazy you know but then to me it felt like the establishment of the the illusions was the mom yelling out his name in all those scenes by the way the mom yeah do you know uh who played the mom no it was uh, Scorsese's mother, who was also in Goodfellas. Oh shit! Mm -hmm. So yeah, in the in the IMDb, it does say Rupert's mom. So I, I guess she was alive. I mean, it could still be an illusion. You know, the, here she is, Car Catherine Scorsese. Damn, she looks just like fucking. Scorsese himself, Martin. Yeah, that's wild. <laughs> she has his face. Has not strong genes. Yeah, look at her face. And yeah, that's pretty much Scorsese's face. Ew. Mm. Yikes. Look, oh, by the, uh, so uh, for the listeners, uh, I'm showing the cast here on screen. We have Diane Abbott. The the girl that plays Rita, the girlfriend of Robert De Niro, in real life, she was married to Robert De Niro from 1976 to 1988. Damn. Damn. And then his second wife, also black. Seems like he's got My a thing. Man. Yeah, he has a type. <laughs> he has a type. Good for him. Good for him. But back then, she was pretty. She This does not hold up. No. Look, no. Look she was really now. pretty in, in that movie, yeah. Yeah, yeah, now she looks like uh, the scarecrow from The Wiz, Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> you guys seen that movie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just clips, man. The clips are wild. Like, if you told me that movie was made in the 40s and it was, like, racist, I would be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a wild movie, man. Yeah, it is. It's a wild movie. She looks like that. Yeah, it's time to say, say, uh, for the, <laughs> it's wild, dude. It's a wild movie. Was it, um, do you, you think The Wiz is racist? Like, it was. No, 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 no. I'm saying if, if it was made in the 30s, uh -huh. I could definitely see someone being like, yo, this is <laughs> wild, guys. <laughs> like, yeah, this was, ugh. Uh, but yeah, no, so I, I, I I'll, be, I'll have to rewatch this again just to see, because yeah. yeah, exactly how I interpreted it. I was, she was, she was dead, and he was just having these manic, kind of or whatever you want to call it, like episodes. Because half yeah, of yeah. he was clearly delusional the whole time. 
Yeah, man. Um, definitely, definitely had uh, fantasies of these conversations she would have. I mean, he built a whole stage in his the basement, he, a whole stage. He there's even the, the scene where he's preparing his audition tape for Jerry, and he's recording it like it's a podcast. He's yeah, yeah. I was gonna tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's blending in audio. And it's like, this yeah, year reminds yeah, me of when I was a kid. Like, with two buttons. <laughs> Remember the Talk Boy from Home Alone Yeah, 2? I had a yeah. Talk Boy. Yeah, dude, I had one too. And I used to fuck around and blend in, pretend I was a radio DJ and all that. Like, if I could have, I don't know where I could ever find those tapes. They're probably lost forever. But I used to record shit like that, like a, like a podcast pretty much. And I was Damn. pretending I was a radio DJ and I would blend in music from the radio uh that will yeah and but that whole pretending that he's doing it seems kind of crazy uh and i'll reference felipe sparza again when i had him on my podcast maybe seven years ago or so he mentioned this movie this is the first time i ever heard of this movie he said sometimes f- comedians have to have some kind of delusion to to get ahead because if you don't if you're just showing up just to hang out and just party if you don't have like a future set up like what's the goal what's the ultimate goal right of yeah. course De Niro was obviously crazy and uh, committed crimes to get to this goal but but it but, worked um, yeah That's and the other thing, it, yeah the other thing is that um, it, he wasn't crazy with everything else he was just crazy with this to, to me, that's what it felt like. That's it was like he was crazy and like he crazy was focused. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like you don't want to say crazy focus, but that's how it felt. Yeah, yeah. That's, Did you like the character of Robert De Niro? Yeah, you liked it. What do you mean, like, in what what aspect? Like, like, like. Did you like, like I mean, the I, character? Like, were you on his side? Uh, at oh. first, at first, and then when he started doing the whole, cra- like, the super craziness, like, showing up at his house, then I started thinking, like, if I was these, uh, this other guy, I would have whooped this motherfucker's ass already, <laughs> like, this guy would be, like, giving me an ear beating the way he was, and just so consistent, and just couldn't, uh. what would, what, what would piss me off about him is, is, like, you, like, you don't listen to direction, so I can't yeah. fucking work with you, like, I yeah. can't have you show up at my house or show up at the fucking office, you know, um, all the fucking time and just be crazy like that. Then it's just like, you're just annoying. Like fucking leave yeah. me alone. Yeah. I get yeah. consistency, but then there's a whole fucking other side yeah. of that shit. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. How about you, Colin? Did you like the character? Like, were you on uh Rupert pumpkin side? Did I say it right? So, yeah. Pumpkin. Yeah. Pumpkin. 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 Pup- pumpkin. Pup- it was like P U P K I N. Rupert Pupkin. Uh, yeah, so, like, initially it just seemed like that. You break into someone's car, I was like, all right. It, that that first scene wasn't terrible. You, could, you saw him when he was first talking to, like, him clearly being uncomfortable when he drops him off. And he's, like, clearly trying to leave, and Rupert Pumpkin's not getting the hint. I was like, uh, I don't like this at all. But then you're like, all right, maybe he's just like nervous and he is, is just overly trying. And then showing up at the office, I was like, all right, again, trying to get ahead. Tried to, he said, stop by. He was a little skeptical, but, mm-hmm. and then after, I think it was after the first, after the first time that he was told like, hey, like he's not going to take a look, and that's what I really was. Nah, man, you got to take yeah. that hit, take the L. Yeah, and then just work hard on something else, man. He clearly doesn't want injuries. You're creepy. Yeah, well, well, they gave him a chance too by the assistant saying, "Let us know when your next gig is, and we'll send somebody else." That would have been in my head, like, "Cool, that's my next move. Let me get yeah. booked." And if they don't show up, then fuck, I need to keep trying this. But yep. that seemed like the clear next step to take. Yes. Yeah, and and this whole movie, like the rest of the movie, would have not happened the way it did, obviously, if Jerry would have not fucked up in the beginning. That opening scene of him uh, breaking into the car, 
that whole topic. Which that was, he, sorry to cut you off, but that yeah. was a weird scene because he, he does break into the car, but he does it in a weird he helps way. Him. Yeah, he, he helps him. him, and he, he does it in a way that mm-hmm. is clearly seizing a moment. Yeah, yeah. He, he earned he earned a, a sixty seconds of him or thirty seconds. Sixty he, seconds, like, hey, drive down to the end of the block. You got me away. Yeah. All right, but mm-hmm. like, kick rocks. And, and there was actually two mistakes that Jerry did. The first one was he invited him to come into the office and. He Hollywood taught them. He should have never said that shit. <laughs> yes. Because now he put it in his head and he's like, oh, I got I got a chance. Number two, he did tell him to drop me off at the industry or whatever. But no, look where he drops him off in front of Jerry's house. Why would you yeah. let some psycho do the whole ride with you? You know? Yeah, that 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 was crazy to me. Yeah, dude. So uh, this it, whole movie it, it, would have not happened if. if yeah. These, and w- which is very important for the movie for this to have we would have had a whole different movie it could have been something totally different a chain of events but th- it was perfect the way it was set up and written i think yeah the, the one the one thing that i really liked about that scene at the beginning before knowing where it was going was that he was so confident and jerry was giving him a chance like okay I'm going to give you this chance because you just seem so confident and in what you're doing and you you seem to know what's up with all this shit you know, and it just, it, you, you never know. It can go one or of two ways, you know, either that person's fucking crazy or this person is crazy enough to get in there and fucking be a star for real. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's such yeah. A weird. Um, I, I did not like Robert De Niro. I didn't like the character. No, you didn't. I, he, no, he played, he's a great actor. The, I mean, the character as, in the fictional side of it, it was amazing. Me personally, I did not like the character. I thought, you know, because he, even in the, I was a little confused if when he went on a date with the girl. Um, Again, so I didn't. I, was I didn't know that was a fantasy. So but, that that I was worried that the because I watched the Joker first. Uh oh yeah 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 yeah. Which spoiler? I mean I don't know man. It's it's a couple years old now, but there's a the whole. There's a whole second act where he thinks he's dating this girl. He's killing at the comedy club, doing this, doing that, and then yeah. you find out it's it's none of it's real. Yeah, it was all in his head. Yeah, and I, I that's, was wondering, that's, it threw me off because of the Joker, even yeah. though I had seen the Kino comedy first a long time ago. Damn. Yeah, it but threw yeah, me out because now watching it again, I was like, is this scene really real? But here's why I didn't like him. Because he's very narcissistic, the, the kind of person that he is. So I was not rooting for him. I know how the movie unfolds, obviously. But it was like he's giving her an autograph of himself. That's such a douchey oh, yeah. thing. It reminds me of uh, my our friend Tony, Sammy. One time, one of his neighbors, uh, he had a, cu- a, a neighbor, uh, two, a guy and a girl that were a couple with a baby. Mm-hmm. And... And they were they they came over to Tony's house and and they gave him I don't know if it was for his birthday a picture of themselves what nice. frame, like <laughs> with, in a frame it was psycho I, it was psycho I, I, like I don't know if it was his birthday what the occasion was but you why would you give a picture of yourself like you just did portraits in a frame so that they could put it in, in I, their house That's I get if it weird. was for your grandma but like <laughs> or, or yeah. your mom or dad but to your name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like the level yeah. of of narcissism, right? Like, it's like, they really need this in their house, a picture of us. <laughs> I guess yeah. I won't get you guys for uh, Christmas next year. Uh, yeah. Take that off the list. <laughs> well, you can send me a Christmas card with yourself <laughs> on it, but don't send me a frame. <laughs> He's like, Here, here's my autograph. Uh, one day is going to be worth a lot. And he was also making fun of, like, he... He was making fun when he would be rich. He would like treat people like peasants. Like that's those are the kind of douchey people that become rich. Yeah, you know, like that you hear about. Like because when people come from humble beginnings, you know, they're usually pretty level headed. But when you get somebody like this guy who's demented, like you know, Sammy and myself, and you've seen it as well, maybe in the in a workplace or you know, but. You get these kind of characters that are like very self-centered, and oh, I was like, "Man, yeah. 
fuck this guy. Because and, and I guess the main reason I didn't like the character is because I've seen this character many times in real life. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you guys both about is in stand-up comedy how often you see this type of character, oh. this type of delusion, this type of like, ugh. So much, yeah. so much. I remember yeah. telling Freddie that one time we had a show and this guy bombed. I mean, bombed. I mean, the, the definition of bomb. And I remember when we came out, we were, you know, I was trying to be like supportive. So I was just like, man, yeah, don't worry, bro. You know, that it happens. And he's like, what? I, I did great. I did great. I killed it. And I was like, what? And I thought he was joking. So I laughed at him. And then he's like, yeah, man, uh, man, that went really good. I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of delusions are these, bro? I get upset if I don't get half the laughs that I got the week before, you know? And, and this was like, no, I did great. Like, what are you? And he was confused. Like, what are you talking? What are you talking about? I, it was great. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, I get jealous. I, I'll be honest. I get jealous. It's like I wish I had that fucking confidence, dude. But then you're gonna live this other reality, like this delusional reality of like everybody you're a laughing stock to everybody else yeah you know we get those comics yeah. that they're they're just not just you know there's some that are socially awkward but they're great guys they're nice guys whatever but then you get those douchebags just like uh rupert uh pumpkin 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 which like that was a, a i felt like a level of narcissist that he wanted to make sure his name was always pronounced correctly he was so adamant about that and i understand a level of like making sure people know who you are saying your name wrong because that that happens and that is annoying yeah but yeah i mean dude i don't know man your name's a little weird you know, like the you know how we talk about movies and old older movies. We're like, man, that didn't hold up, you know, hold up or whatever. Yeah. Um, the whole theme of the movie holds up so much. Like, I know the comedy set. It's different. Yeah, it's it's old hack shit. But you see it today. People trying to get famous, just like when we were little, people would always desire, oh, fame and fortune, right? Yeah. And you you see it. You see the evolution of it now, um, except like Sammy and I share uh, those clips, stand-up clips to each other in private all the time, talk shit about a bunch of comics. Uh, they're doing like crowd work with the subtitles, you know, the little reels. The, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The TikToks and all. You, you get, you're seeing a lot of this shit, these TikTok people just blowing up. Even non-comics, just regular uh, people uh, doing little lip singing or thirst traps. Everybody's just out there trying to shitty ass Jackson Mahomes. Fuck him. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's a yeah. personal vendetta. I feel like, but yeah, that's... I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. At all. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. I didn't watch anything. On if you if it makes you feel any better, <laughs> I hate. Rupert uh, Pupkin, as much as I hate the Chiefs, just so you know. <laughs> if that makes you feel any better. I mean, uh, a little bit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the last Legion of Skanks? Uh, Louis J. Gomez shows up, and he takes off his sweater, and he's wearing Chiefs. Oh, yeah. No, Mahomes, shit. And then he's, oh. he puts on the Chiefs hat. He's wearing oh. it throughout the whole episode. No, uh yeah, it's fucked up, dude. <laughs> Dang it! No. Is that the the one from this week? Yeah, Monday. Well, yeah, obviously Monday. Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, no, I got, no, I'm gonna watch that. I'm gonna watch that. Fucking uh, Dan Soder the week before or two weeks before, he almost murdered Joe DeRosa dude, for taunting so, him. It, it for was the Niners losing against the uh, Eagles. Yeah, and, and when it comes from somebody like Joe DeRosa or Luis J. Gomez that don't watch football. It's even worse. I would Dude, say it really, it really you- does. <laughs> it really, I didn't, I didn't get a lot, but I got like one or two that were like, ah, man, it sucks. Like, I don't have to tell you, uh, I guess well, your, whole city, just- your whole city is, you're all consoling each other. Did anything really, happen? Really? Yeah. Any really crazy? Uh, I mean like a couple of people went down to broad street and I was like, why we lost. 
Like, just, you know, let's all soak back to our houses and be bummed out. I don't know what to, like... It's Broad, Broad Street, the main downtown? Yeah, Broad, so sorry, yeah. So, for people that haven't been to Philly, Broad Street, if you ever see those clips, that is the main street that leads to City Hall. But it is, that area always is the area where everybody goes and riots or... How many comedy clubs out there? What is there? The two that I know for sh- There's three. So there's the Punchline, Helium, oh, right. the Raven. And then they do kind of spots around. But those are the big three that I know about for sure. Are they kind of in the same vicinity? Uh, kind of. Oh, the Punchline... Okay. Um, I forget exactly where it is. Uh, let me find it real quick if you guys want to vent. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering um, c- about that because I guess like uh, New York, yeah, New York has different pockets. Uh, but like if you go to Hollywood, the Laugh Factory, Improv, and the Comedy Store, they're all within oh, yeah. five miles from each other. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, guess. this is like five miles away, but it's still kind of a city, so it takes you a it take you like 10, 15 minutes to get to. Mm. Weren't they expecting a riot whether the Eagles won or not? Didn't they yeah, grease up the poles and all they that They grease shit? up the poles and all that fucking crazy <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> yeah, well, so they have this thing in the summer. It's called the Italian Festival. And they uh, it, it literally one of the competitions is a climb a greased pole. So, so they're preparing <laughs> for this. Moment. Literally, it is. So, like, people really do that constantly. It's wild, man. I don't understand it. And yeah. so, yeah, the second that it hits, and then, you know, it's promoting it more and more. People are like, all right, well, then we're going to try to overdo it. One of my favorites is uh, some Eagles fan is talking hella shit. And uh, I think the people recorded it on a train. And then he fucking hits up. That is so funny. <laughs> it's a yeah. sign. Slams into a pole. Slams. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's fantastic. Yeah, that's the problem, man. If you have these crazy fans, you want to see them revved up in the best way possible. And Philly has that reputation of having the worst fans, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're terrible if you're not, if you're not a fan of them or accept accept them like they'll go they're, they're they're one of the biggest traveling teams like they yeah. really do travel oh a lot. okay okay so they they wherever they're at they're like what do you mean we're all here yeah and it's like yeah man you're in a kind of a different town like no other team really does the bills do it but the bills seem no nice about it like they're just like no we just kind of want to party with ourselves yeah, like the Packers. You hear the Packers are like the nicest fans. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're just like, I don't know, man. It's, it's a weird, it's a very weird group. Philly is, Philly's a weird place. It, they have great fans, mm-hmm. but the the outliers are just awful. Yeah. It's like the Raiders, man. Yeah, it's, I would imagine. Raider fans are terrible. Um, but. Having said that, fuck Rupert Pumpkin and the Chiefs. And yes. and what, here's one of the things I noticed. Uh, when Jerry, the scene where Jerry is walking through the street and people are like going crazy over him. Like if he's he's bigger than what he is because he's, he's a TV host. But man, everybody's like going like crazy over him. Like if he's Justin Bieber, even in the beginning. Yeah. I had a little bit of an issue with that. I had a little bit of an issue with, uh, with the opening scene. As much as I told you I like it and it pivots the whole movie. Um, is that correct? Is that Did I use it right? It pivots? Did you like that? It, pivots. it sounded right to me, but I, I think you're looking at um, Colin because he's white. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, I, no. So there's a really when I was watching it, there's there's a uh, what's it? there's a Family Guy clip uh-huh. where where Meg ties up Brian, and it is literally the exact scene from the movie. Oh, nice! And I was trying to find it real quick. No, oh, you, oh yeah, yeah. 
There's so the character of Jerry Lawler. Jerry the, Lawler? Jerry Lawler, Lawler? That's, Lawler? That's the guy from uh, WWE. <laughs> that's from WWE, dude. <laughs> what the fuck? Like Jerry I'm Lawler. telling you, everybody. I'm coming, WrestleMania. Lang- Langford. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Langford. Yeah. The character wasn't initially going to be named Jerry. It was supposed to be something else. But because Jerry Lewis took the role and did the role, yeah. they Jerry, asked, Jerry Lewis said, change the name to Jerry. And there's some of those films... Some of those um, clips when he's just walking during the day, it's just him and they're recording it. No shit. Yeah. Really. Damn. That's pretty interesting. Uh, and, I can see that because Jerry Lewis was such a huge star at the time also. That, right. Yeah. They're, they're like, whatever you want, Jerry. We'll change the character to Jerry. But then it worked out because they actually got like people, just like random people in the streets going, Jerry, Jerry. And you hear it. Yeah. And yeah. he talked about how he had these interactions, and the one where the woman is on a payphone. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And she says, "Well, I hope you get cancer or something." He's like, "That actually happened to me." Yeah. Damn. Wait, uh, wait that that happened to Jerry? Like, in, yeah, in like the- some wo- some woman actually said that to him. Oh, okay, but that recorded scene was planned, but it was inspired by something that happened to him. Yes. Wow. See, you did your homework. That's good shit right there. Because that's one of my notes. That's my first note um, where she wishes cancer on him because he's trying to get her to talk to her, the nephew. Yeah. And it's like modern day cameo. You see celebrities doing these cameos, This the app that you, you send a video to so-and-so, but you pay for it. Um, but then again, it also reminds me of modern day somebody coming up and recording themselves with you. Oh make, yeah, yeah. They didn't ask. They didn't even ask your permission, and then they're just recording themselves in front of you, like if you're just some kind of object. Yeah, uh, it happened to uh, Bad Bunny, Mag- McGregor, Bat Bunny. Both of them are, I think, through the phone. I don't know. Yeah, they threw the the, the fan's phone. They grabbed the phone. They threw it. It's fucking rude. And this lady, it just kind of shows you what Twitter would be in if it was a real person. In person, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put that. Yeah, if she just was immediately immediately switches on him. I've had people do that to me. I'm not. I'm not even anything. I'm just, you know, uh, a blue collar, hardworking man, com- comedian by night. You know, but that's happened online. People think that people perception is reality, is what they say, right? Yeah. And people see you. They see you doing shows on the Las Vegas Strip, and they think you're something that in their head but it's 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 definitely not the case yeah oh you pull, yeah. you pulled up the the scene fuck yeah let's let's watch it you want to watch it yeah let's do it uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I I think uh <laughs> No, that's good. Um would you? What? No. No. no? Oh, How, bro, okay. I wanted her to sit on my fucking face. God damn that scene. I almost jerked off, bro. I wish I wish you would have shown a titty or something. So, that's the kind of so, craziness I want in my life, bro. Shit. <laughs> That's how long I haven't had sex, bro. (laughs) 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 Okay. So that brings us to Sandra Sandra Bernhardt. As a kid, seeing her on the show Roseanne, seeing her that she was in movies and stuff, I was always like, this is the ugliest woman on earth. I've always thought that. For real. But this scene? I was like, I would. Mm. I mean... Dude, she has a face of just like you got hit in the face with all of God's wrath. <laughs> it's unreal how like it's almost a credit to how great of an actress she is. Yeah. Cause holy shit, man. It is like yeah, there's a movie called Elephant Face <laughs> that she could have just played. What'd you call me? <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 
Dude, it's crazy how bad her. Like, but yeah, I, I, could, I understand the crazy aspect of it, but everything else, I was like, yo. And apparently wealthy, well, though. Well, I mean, she kept saying yeah. it's her police. Like, that was that was the one that bummed me out. I was like, I just want to know more about this person. You yeah. have so much money, clearly. You're in yeah. New York. What was her motive? Crazy. Because cause we know Rupert, his motive was to do a set on the show, right? He wanted to be a comic. Yeah. What was her mo motive? I think just n never being told no. She hated Ooh. being told no. She had the her money. Man, she, she, her doctor said her at one point she was like, my doctor's always told me not to do stuff, not to do stuff. Well, I want to do this. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, holy shit, man. What you thought she was wack. hot? No. No? I thought in that Sam, scene too, Sammy, I thought I she was I get in that too. scene. Now I think she's hot. Like, moving That's, forward. Me too. I went yeah, to yeah, Instagram. Yeah. I went to her Instagram. I'm like, it's crazy how you change. Now as a, an, an adult, I'm like, I, I would jerk off to that. Yeah, yeah, I, I did. Think what? I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the body is pretty planky. I'm not gonna lie, but it's like that is. There's I, no way this butt's not flat as can be. Yeah, it's it's pretty bad. Right. But Sammy, you would let her just like fucking ravage all over you, like just fucking I, take control. I, you probably I, let her whip you, huh? No, so, bro. I'd let her put her three fingers in my butt. Damn, yeah. all right, get it, bro. You let her gag you and shit. Put a yeah. fucking I let her like put, the gimp. I let her put that fucking sucker you've been sucking on that the stick is already fucking. I, that's how crazy I want her, bro. I want her to look me like your fucking lollipop right there. You fucking queer. <laughs> you know. I, I don't appreciate the homophobic. <laughs> I'm <remarks>. sorry. That, <laughs> I want her to suck me off the way you're sucking off that lollipop, bro. Fuck. I'm chew it. I'm chewing on it now. God damn, bro. I let her chew it. Shit. With those Dude, fucking she was. Teeth. <laughs> <laughs> she was nuts man uh and and i they're all nuts um sammy click on the uh thing in the chat i just sent you freddie you can do no it way well. oh it doesn't let me oh no well, shit can can uh, she you pose send naked to, can you send yeah. it in the group chat <laughs> I got you. Wow. Bro. So, you. so call for the listeners and viewers because you're not going to see this on the screen. There's pictures Shit. of her nude. I didn't know that. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. I can't. See like it would definitely be one of those where, like, afterwards, you know, like you're like, uh, what the fuck did I do? But Can you leave. I gotta like. I got. Yeah. Something. I gotta go. I gotta go play. Uh, I got something going. I got. I got pickleball. I gotta go play or something. I gotta I go know. climb a slimy uh, street pole. I gotta. Uh, <laughs> I gotta take an aggressively hot shower. <laughs> uh, I gotta go take a jog up uh, in uh, the Rocky Stairs or. I'm just trying to do right. Philly references. All right. Uh, all right. We had a tough week already. Um, yeah, she was definitely crazy. Um, I would definitely like if I was to choose whether with the the bartender or her, I would oh, choose Sandra. Be, oh yeah, bartender all day. No, I would go Sandra. I would go Sandra. Oh, you're so wrong. She has a rich house, dude. Um, I it, if I was Robert, De Niro, she's, she's definitely cutting you at some point. She's definitely cutting you. At some point, like you're gonna wake up. Blood. She's yeah. gonna Phil Hartman wife me. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, she's definitely crazy. Um, like I do. I. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Because I was gonna bring up something else now. No, I mean it's just that she was wacky in a way where you're like something isn't right. You clearly you have very wealthy parents. That were just like, all right, well, we have a crazy daughter. We're just going to give her everything, and we'll just put her here, and hopefully she doesn't kill anybody. They also yeah, don't like mention... The, like the girl that made my lollipops. Rich yeah. <laughs> little girl. But they also don't mention anything about her getting arrested. They don't. That's a good point. Which I was like, wait, so this isn't no. brought up at all? Mm. Uh, really? Yeah. Again, yeah. makes me believe... He really just went to jail himself, and is still was still in jail. 
I I uh I wanted to bring up the scene where he's hallucinating, fantasizing that he's getting married, right? And uh that was breakthrough. I liked how it was uh, uh, a guy, a white guy, Italian, whatever he is, but he's ma- it's a biracial wedding. Yeah. I thought that was cool. Um, nowadays, when you see... Here's the thing. What, what happens nowadays when you see something biracial in a movie, they focus too much on the biracial Or they kind of be woke about it. Yeah, yeah, and it comes across as like, okay, you're trying too hard. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if that was the same case back in the day. I don't know. I don't think back so. In I mean, the day. Clearly, he's just into black girls. And he yeah. Was like, nah. Yeah. That's, that's what almost true. makes it better in a way. It wasn't. It wasn't for. It wasn't brought up. Like, there's a thing in English in like English television. I'm not saying like, like in, in, television in England. They you just happen to have like the movie the tv show luther it's a great tv show it's like a cop drama it's idris elba he just happens to be black they don't make any reference to it they don't mm. talk about it it's it's you go oh yeah like i don't think about that at all and it it, it stops you where like a lot of american television it's so forced it, it, you yeah. almost get exhausted initially You're like fine that's that's great but uh, when you don't bring it up, that's the best thing. I exactly. just saw the movie You People. On oh Netflix. yeah, yeah, we just watched it too. How was on letter? I I gave it a one, bro. If I could, I would give it a negative five. It was terrible. It was it a just, terrible woke movie. Really? It was bad. I, I chuckled. I mean, there was a uh, couple parts where I chuckled. I thought it was pretty funny, but it definitely was just another. Because you're a hack. Fucking- <laughs> you just said you chuckled, you fucking hack. <laughs> I just hacked you, I chuckled. fucking idiot. I chuckled. I didn't think it was funny. I chuckled. I, I fake laughed. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Well, I, I, it was It was a very bad remake of uh, the Bernie Mac one. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the one with Ashton Kutcher. Yeah. So that is a remake already. There's a movie that came out. It's called Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. Made in... And I'm going to find out I right now. I think that's the picture one, no? No, no, no. Before that. Before that, there was Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. It's called... It actually isn't called... It's called Guess Who's Coming to Dinner rather than Guess Who. Oh, yeah. They don't it's made Guess in Who. 19, 1967. Oh. And... Is it a black movie, man or black yeah, woman? Yeah. Black man, white woman. Hmm. And uh, it's not a bad movie. It was funny. I was, talking to, somebody, Hill. I was talking to somebody about it. And like I, they were like, well, for the time, in 1967, it was this kind of this big deal. I was like, yeah, I guess so. But uh, I don't know. Yeah. Like, it's not a big deal. I don't think about it at all. Yeah, you don't think about it. You just see it, and it's like ah. Oh. Mm-hmm. But but I appreciate it. I was like, yeah, this is kinda, this is cool. They didn't even mention that. Like I thought, you know, when he fucking rages out when they they break into Jerry's house, and he's like, "You're just a waitress." I thought he was gonna be like, "You're just a n-word waitress" or something like that. There <laughs> was a moment where I thought he was going to like, I, yeah, yeah, I thought he was gonna go racial and stuff. Um, but yeah, no, it was like, okay, no, this is cool. The game yeah. made by his principal. Like Which in his fantasy, that? like this is the kind of things these. He's an incel, right? That's what he is. Essentially, is that's what's so similar right. with him in Taxi Driver. He has these yeah. grandioso like ideas, and he thinks he's the coolest guy, but he also knows he's a weirdo and was a weirdo, but doesn't think he's a weirdo anymore. Mm-hmm. And you're like, all right, but you're still a weirdo because you never got over those you never got any self-awareness right yeah yeah um do you notice the 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 principal when he was marrying them he said uh what is uh, uh, yeah yeah i would like to apologize exactly for uh, everything we've done like he has a lot of things that like like uh, clearly harbored yeah it's like he was either bullied he was a loser and and there's this is a kind of person that goes on a shooting spree yeah absolutely you know? i mean that that his stand-up 
where he talks about the kids used to beat him up. That oh, was yeah. the only way to graduate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is true. Uh, um, uh, another scene is when he's waiting in the office. I, I like this one. Um, I like how security came out and escorted him out the first time. I, shout out to securities that know how to de-escalate a situation and and take control still. You know, like sometimes you get bouncers or just fucking hothead uh, pieces of shit with authority. And it's like when you could Jedi mind trick someone to do what you want. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And that's that's happened when I was the one out of order. That's happened before. And it's like I had this old security guy just de-escalate a situation that was getting bad. Right. And I was like, man, shot, yeah, good, good job, man. Because he just fucking kind of tricks him. He's like, come here for a second. Hold on. No, no, come here. And then he just takes him out. Of course, the second time he fucking puts hands on him. But you know. I mean, if you break in that second time, I don't, I think you've got to do it at that point. Clearly. Yeah. It's, but yeah, no, to. you're right. But you're right. The, the first time he was like, no, man, like, I get it. I get it. I understand. <sighs> And yeah, he does de-escalate it in a really good way. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I uh, has that ever happened to you guys? Where you get like uh, kicked out of some place, and you get someone that knows like what they're doing, and instead of just being a dick to you, they're you know does that does that ever happen? I'm trying to think, I don't know. I no. Nah, well, so I I always get mistaken for a bouncer more than anything. <laughs> just because like I'm a, I'm a bigger guy. I'm not even that big like I'm six feet tall I'm a the heavy center guy and so I always just get mistaken as a bouncer more than anything yeah. so anytime a bouncer says anything to me I'm like all right man like whatever yeah. I don't feel like dealing usually with cool. this yeah, my buddy cool. dude my buddy used to do the funniest thing looking back it's a wild thing but he he, he was dating this uh, when I li- we lived in Florida, he was dating this very attractive Latino girl. And he would tell the bartenders if he couldn't get in, he's like, well, she's definitely getting raped in there. So if she gets raped, it's your fault. I was like, you can't just say that, man. He's like, I mean, it got me into the bar literally every time. <laughs> I was like, you're right, because that bouncer's going to be like, well, I don't want that to happen. Wouldn't go in after him to stop no. the alleged rape, but like would just be like, oh, hey. I guess go in and stop it. It was it was bizarre, man. It was biz- but it worked again. Worked every single time. It when you're able to do something like that, like like for example, a comedy club when people get out of order. Sometimes I've noticed, like at the uh, uh, Drew or other people in charge at LA Comedy Club, like they they instead of just telling people you're out of here no 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 they say hold on let's talk outside real quick let's talk outside and it's a smart thing to do so you don't disrupt the show you don't make a scene and you know that's what they teach they're supposed to teach right um but you don't get that all the time like oh it's happened around me like i I saw monty monty's a homie of mine uh who works at the comedy club he's a bartender we were at uh, some you random froze. bar, and some guy got kicked out. He's leaving the bar, but he wants to go back in. He's Can leaving bloody faced. I did not hear a word. You we didn't said. hear. We didn't hear a word after you said Monty's a homie of yours. Damn it! I was like, okay, cool, Can you hear? Cool can you hear story. me now? Yeah. Okay, so Monty, we're at a at this bar, and this guy's taking getting taken out by bouncers with a bloody face, and he wants to get back in, and he wants to start throwing shit. And me and Monty were outside in the patio having some cigarettes, and we're like, "Fuck, this guy might hit us or something." Monty immediately goes into like bouncer mode, director, you know, not director mode, uh, like bouncer, like in a food service mode. He's like, "Hey, buddy, buddy!" And then he looks at Monty. He's like, "What'd you have for breakfast, bro?" And it just it threw him off. His rage just <laughs> yeah. went out the window. He's like, and he answered him. I forgot uh, bagel and, and bacon or something. And, and then he just started talking to him. What's going on, man? Are you feeling good? You know what? And then he just started asking some questions. I'm like, damn, Monty, you just fucking Jedi mind trick this guy. Damn. He calmed the fuck damn, down. And he really was good. raging. Yeah. He was raging. And um, so that's one thing I noticed. I'm like, man, yeah. Security people that you didn't make it to be a cop, 
you know, they're not always assholes. Sometimes are like they they're great people, man. Yeah. No, yeah, they're definitely good bounce, but it was it was I, I you're right. I didn't look at it, but like that is a good aspect that he did a really good job on is getting him out right away. It's funny cuz if it wasn't for Sandra Bernhardt, he probably may have not gone back in there. True. But she she was like Oh no, he's definitely in there. I saw him. I saw I saw him walk mm-hmm. back in and revved back up that whatever that is in him. Yeah. And um, oh, go, oh ahead. go ahead. No, it was just inter- it was very interesting watching that and if it wasn't for that moment it wouldn't have it wouldn't have happened. Like he, he something again different different story it might it might have changed it a little bit did you notice when they broke in um jerry's house the asian butler oh yeah and when he gets on the phone he's like they broke in they're inside the house they're ruining the house (laughs) yeah (laughs) they're and and literally they're just walking around kind of they're not really ruining like they're not fucking up the house so I was like, they're ruining the house. Could that be racial? Because there was a black woman see, in the house? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I, see, I, I, I know. I Asians are racist, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it could be that they're ruining the house because there's a black woman in the house. I took it I like took, they were... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Colin. No, I took it as like a classism thing again. I took it ah. as like there's poor people in the house. Mm, they're ruining the house. That's still fucked up. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, just still. having some poor, you know, some poor people. But how would he know they're poor? I took I took it like like they're like he knew they were they're crazy. Nice. I I took it like he knew this guy was crazy. He wasn't like making any sense to him, and that's mm. just and so he was like it was just a way of urgency to like just He's come like, over. I'm, to, you I'm, know. A, I'm gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That 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 was wild for him to say that. I was like, and I uh, and I think it's right. because it was overwhelming for him because he was like, this guy's yeah. not listening to me. He's crazy. If he would have some respect, he would wait outside or wait till Jerry comes in. But they mm. went in, and he even gave him his bags, like you know, like put him in the room. You know, it's so like what the fuck. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I, that I was. felt yeah. To me, it felt like it was more of a more of a, um uh, he knew that they were freaking nuts. Well, yeah. that scene, that scene does a really good job of showing how crazy and obs- or more obsessive, which I guess the same thing, uh, he is because he's going through all of Jerry's pictures and he's telling her about every single moment. He knows about every single moment. Oh, yeah. He tells the story like he was there, and it's like, but you weren't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Like, you weren't there. You have no idea. You, you're just doing that because he's talked about it. If he'd never talked about it, you'd have no idea about what any of these photos are. Yeah. Mm. So I thought that, yeah. that it really showed. And how she's like, oh, well, if you're friends, then who cares? Like, let's put on some music. Let's hang out. But then the second Jerry comes in, he's like, oh, let's hang out. Let's get a cocktail. Like, whatever. Like, yeah, hey, you thirsty? Oh, I'm dying of thirst. It's so hot. Mm. And he keeps trying to make it casual. It's like, dude, you're in some yeah. stranger's house. Yeah. Yeah. That's when Jerry kind of loses it, kind of. And he's like, all right, you're crazy. You need to get the hell out of here. He still held on to it. He still was, like, trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. You know? Yeah, he really yeah. was. He really, the entire film, mm-hmm. I was like, Jerry, this is a bit on you, bud. Like, except that this dude's crazy. And yeah. you're not accepting it, and you keep trying to be Mr. Nice Guy, mm-hmm. and you're not. Yeah, um, yeah. That that's the thing that's um, the thing about like Skankfest. As much as we like Skankfest, um, you you get those kind of people that are a little too obsessive. No, oh, yeah. Um, I, I, you know, and they start chat chatting people's ears off and. I saw it. I saw a couple comics because the comics are walking around amongst the the, uh, the fans peasants. of the uh, you know 
the peasants. <laughs> <laughs> and they get stopped, and it's cool. It's like, you took a picture, but now you want to give me a joke to say, or you want to give me... That's the worst. Dude, uh, I can't imagine. That must be the worst thing ever in the world. Like, dude, this is funny. It's like, well, then do it yourself. Yeah. I think in Skankfest, people behave better. I think that was a bad example. Everybody no, in Skankfest that's... is super chill. <laughs> You're right, but I... But yeah, I mean, like when we were in the when we were all hanging out in the green room, like we were all talking with each other. If a comic came yeah. over, we would if they engaged a little bit. Like we were all talking. Yeah, yeah. But it was never. It was like, yeah, man. Like you're not gonna just you just don't walk up to stranger a group of strangers and insert yourself into a conversation. That's a no, crazy thing to do. I, I think you see it more in comedy shows now. That I think about it. like Skank Fest, everybody's kind of like well behaved for the most part. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like, you'll hear Big J talk about, oh, I just did this last weekend, and man, I had to hear it from the fans after the show because he comes out, hangs out, and I bet you that you get some of those weirdos. Yeah. Right, so like, uh, yeah, I mean, you 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 see it. You two probably see it more than I do. Like, I I went to bonfire like Christmas show last, not this past one, the one prior. And Big J and Christine are all just hanging out, shooting the shit, whatever. And mm -hmm. we're all just sitting out there talking. Like, Sal was there, and Sal's outside. And, yeah, it's yeah. a bigger crowd for Sal. And you just kind of go, like, hey, what's up, man? But you mm -hmm. could see, I, I could see, I could see there was a little bit of crazy in that. Like, I think everybody kind of has that. I don't know. Like, I don't know who, I, I don't know who I'd be crazy about if i saw some like i've met all the people i wanted to meet like the only person i'd want to meet is Chappelle, but there's no world in which Chappelle would want to have a conversation with me so i, I kind of just like oh, well yeah I don't want that kind of shit is scary like for me like back when we went to go watch ari shafir um his special the um regular paid regular um yeah. it was the first time that joe rogan came back to the comedy store the day before and I remember one of my goals was to go meet Joe Rogan. And, uh, Those guys were the same height. <laughs> you know, I think he's shorter <laughs> than me. <laughs> I think I'm buffer than him, but, you know. Um, Probably same weight, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but my wife. For different Jamie, reasons. <laughs> you're stupid. My <laughs> wife, Jamie, went to the bathroom and she saw the patio and she saw that she was there. So she came to let me know. She's like, he's there. You should go, you know, meet him. And I was like, fuck it, there's my chance. And when I saw him out the door, I was like, fuck that. I just went to the bathroom and then I came back. <laughs> I was like, fuck, mm -hmm. I can't. There's no way. What am I going to say to him to be like, you know, hey, meet me. And I was like, fuck that. I got scared. So, but I think that's what in like, in rational people, they have that like, man, I don't know, man. Like, what are they like? Really? Really? We're going to, what are we going to talk about? Like, is there a level of, like, not that you're not interested, but you know what I mean? Like, there's a level of, like, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like, whatever. Like, that's cool, man. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it is scary. I mean, we, the first night, I think it was the night before the pre-party, we yeah. walked by Big J and Christine and everybody. It was, like, four in the morning. And I was, like, standing next to Big J in the crosswalk, and I just didn't know what to do, so I just kind of, like, playfully punched his arms and i was like big j and he just looked at me and laughed and then he walked away <laughs> hey big j yeah, was like, up, big j <laughs> and then, and then I, he just looked at me and he like giggled and then, he, and then i just kept walking because i'm like what the fuck am i gonna what you know That's just so be a drunk funny. dude <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. I remember they passed by us and they kept walking because they they were part. They they stayed at the gold the nugget. Yeah, like that. damn. That's so. But like, so I mean, back to the Eagles. Like that Skankfest, I got to watch the Eagles game with Big J and I, like Joe DeRosa, Arja Fear, and we're all just sitting there watching the Eagles game. And yeah. there was a drunk fan that came to the table, and everybody was visibly uncomfortable. Like Mike Rainey Ooh. was there. One uh, of those, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And you're just like, oh man, this this sucks. The environment kind of changed already. It's yeah, like we all. Like, and, oh. and then he got kicked out. 
And then we were all like, oh, man, this is so much better. Now we can all like relax. Like we all- Anybody address it? Uh, afterwards. Afterwards, I was like, damn, that guy sucked, didn't he? <laughs> it, it was he great. wasn't a big buff guy, was he? No, it was oh, just, some, I mean, every the looking- The big buff guy I, I snitched on. Yeah. I mean, damn. He was, he was annoying, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a- No, go ahead, Sammy, go ahead. Oh, no, yeah, he tried to fight Matt at the pre-party. He kind of started talking shit to him because he bumped into him, and uh, yeah, it was that guy was what man, uh, the owner of LA Comedy Club. Oh, I think he told me that. Yeah. What did he do? He bumped into him. He was like dancing, and then he bumped into Matt, and then like Matt was just like kind of hesitant because he was like really aggressive, and he's like, "Well, you don't want to shake mm-hmm. my hand, bro?" Like blah blah. blah. And Matt was like, "I'll shake your hand," and and uh, the guy took it like he was trying to like disrespect him and shit. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and it was just like, but he was, it was also kind of playful. Like he, he thought he was being funny, but it just did seem a little aggressive. And I was like, fuck, I don't know if he's, if this, this is one of those things where he could turn it violent. Like, you know, it could be like, I'm just playing with you, but now I'm going to fuck you up. Yeah. yeah. It's like when he was moshing at the fucking, um, what was it? The goddamn comedy jam. He's all yeah. like, he was in a back just kind of like pushing some people and and he was touching a guy that didn't want to be touched he didn't even know him some little sc- yeah. skinny scrawny guy Ugh. so that's when i'm like i right, i'm gonna fuck this I'm, i went and got a oh. yellow shirt pull classic they, freddy and snitch on him that i yeah dude and then they they he was out of control it could have turned into a fight yeah it would have sure he... ruined it would have been like oh man the first fight is game for that's not cool yeah it's like we're you know if anything i think i might have saved skin for us Wow, you're a hero, bro. You're the biggest fucking yeah, hero, yeah. bro. I'm like, <laughs> all right. Skankfest Vegas 2023 would have not happened if there was a fight. And there you go. Just so you guys know, I saved Skankfest from uh, never coming back. And they're back. They're going to be back this year. Good job, bro. Damn, fuck it. I'm so yeah, hyped. Dude. And uh, they were super cool with him. Again. And he was cool. He realized, oh, I'm too fucked up. They just told him to go home for the night. He was back the next day. Yeah. A lot of the time, man, that's all you have to do is just that's it. get them out and be like, all right, man, just come back tomorrow, bro. It's all good. Most he was ready to, care. this guy was like, it, it, it seemed like he was ready to hook out. Yeah. And oh, yeah, yeah. Was, I remember you telling the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was wearing a red tank top with yellow letters that said Hulkamania. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. shit, dude. Um Yeah, man, oh, yeah. this this was uh I I really liked the movie. I think it was a good movie overall. Um there's a lot of comparisons uh to the Joker. Um and here's the connection. Obviously you have that connection in uh where the Joker was inspired very much by Taxi Driver this movie and I think I heard they got inspired by another movie called The Network. I never heard of this movie. So Network is supposed to be, is the Mad Raven. That, I'm just pitching it. That could be our next movie. Mm. Network, I'll bring it up on on IMDb real quick and share it on the screen. Mm -hmm. Uh, But Sammy, overall thoughts on the movie, man. What'd you think? I really liked it. Um, It held up. It was a really good movie. It drew me in to hate and love certain characters. Um, it also gave me good perspective on what comedy was back then. It was very suit and tie, very TV based. Like you want to get on TV. Uh, it was very gimmicky, but I guess back then it wasn't a gimmick. Now it seems like a gimmick because everybody's done that. Um, was I wonder? I wonder if there was open mics back then. I know. I'd have to imagine. Well, uh, maybe not. So like, one, if you wanted to be a comic, maybe you had to know a comic and say, hey, can I try out a, a, a set on your show, maybe? Yeah. I mean, how do you start back then? If know. you ever listen to Jay Leno talk about back in the day, I mean, Jay Leno started comic. When he, Jay Leno was a professional comic, there was still no comedy clubs yet. He was doing it in showrooms for mobsters and, and uh, Wait, who, who vari- was he? variety. Wait, who Variety acts. Uh, Jay, Len- Jay Leno. Oh, okay, okay. Jay Leno. If you hear him on Rogan, he talks about 
when he used to be an up-and-coming comic, he was already a pro comic, making a living off of it. He was performing in showrooms for mobsters. Wow. And, and variety shows. There were, So if there wasn't a comedy club yet, of course there would not even be a up, open mic. Yeah. I wonder when the first open mic started. That would be interesting to find out. Yeah. But, yeah, how would he practice? Yeah. Yeah. You know, how would... I don't know how you would practice. The one thing I did notice were like um, there were certain scenes where they try to sit, change the angle on the camera, or try, you know, they're obviously changing. But the angles were so off in certain parts where I didn't know if this was like some sort of calling to something. Um, but maybe it was just like I just noticed there's a couple scenes where they're like focusing straight on a character, and then they would change it to a different view. But the characters just don't seem like they're in line where they were before and then like it seems like oh, the way they're the, so, talking is different like they definitely went okay cut let's go over here and then like it's continuity like, yeah 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 i have yeah. to imagine that's his interpretation of kind of showing the manic level of like his craziness and showing like the distorted views i would imagine because yeah. there was a scene where sandra was talking to jerry and the camera's like focused on her and then it goes to like behind him and her like at a different angle but they like if like the continuity isn't there because there isn't there it just seems like they're in a different spot like it just seems like they move weird and then the 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 way they're talking like changes and it just totally yeah. seemed to me it was just like they definitely went okay cut and then they moved, and then they came back, and they're like, they "Okay, I think it's right here." Position. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was a couple yeah, of painters like tape. You got to use the painters tape on the floor. Yeah. So house. there's there's one thing you saying that just reminded me. So Scorsese, a lot of his films have seemed to have been him trying to make an unlikable character likable. Like mm. if you go over his list of movies. Ta like taxi driver taxi driver mm -hmm. the guy's a fucking psycho but yeah. he but they try to make him likable yeah they really do raging bull the guy I and mean, he's a terrible person he is a terrible person and he tries to make him and like this likable guy in the sense he tries to paint him in this good wolf of wall street does the same way uh what was the other one that I that really reminded me? A oh, Goodfellas, Goodfellas, yeah. Goodfellas. I mean, this guy's a mobster. He's a bad guy, mm. and they really try to make him this like great, like oh no man, he was he was a good guy that was trying to make it well done, trying to make it, and you're like no man, these are but Scorsese does that, and I feel like in almost every movie he does. He really tries to make these people likable, and yeah, a lot of the time that, he does. That that is true. I never thought about that. Wolf of Wall Street. I mean, that guy's a terrible guy. He ripped off a lot of people. Yeah, and at the end of the movie, you're kind of like, oh, well, I want yeah. to be that guy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Want to snort uh, cocaine off of uh, someone's ass? Oh. Yeah, sounds awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I, that was my. Uh, then again, the only the only other thing is the ending. For me, I'm still I with you talking to you and Sammy. I, I think maybe it was real, but man, it really. Yeah. Let's talk about it. There's some questionable. Uh, I'm like I don't know, man. This guy was crazy, and he had these all illusions. And a lot of times his illusions were him talking, but other people talking. So is it actually an illusion or is it not an illusion? I don't know. So I believe the the director is trying to let you know uh, at the end, at the very, very end, when he walks out with the red suit. I mean, they have the little montage of he went to prison, he wrote a book, he went to number one. Uh, he's on the different covers of magazines and uh, people are obsessed with him, right? You're like, whoa, that's crazy. It's, it all turned around. But at the very end, I think he gives you a hint that it's all an illusion. Yeah. The very end, 
when he comes out with the red suit on his own show, right? They int- the the announcer introduces him. The audience is clapping like crazy. He comes out, he does this thing, then he introduces him again. He keeps saying it. He says it like five times. And I think that's the hint that it's okay, this is it's not real. Why Maybe it's the CEO calling him or something or like the mom, right. like kind of like the mom thing where it's not, he's calling his name, but not, not to announce him to fucking like, you know, to call him. <laughs> exactly. So that, that's, that was my only thought as to maybe, no, it's, it reminded okay. me of, sorry, I just wanted to, say, Jim Carrey had a quote that it reminded me of, uh, and I went, uh, I think everybody should get rich and famous and do everything they've ever dreamed of so they can see that it's not it's not the answer. And that's, mm. I feel yeah, like, maybe... That's, that's pretty good. Or maybe what Rupert Pumpkin, Pumpkin is going through a little bit. So, like, he maybe, maybe now he's in jail, but maybe he just still has this illusion that he's... Yeah. Down and everybody still, everybody was in love with me. Yeah, I'm going to play the very end for you. And if for the listeners, in case it doesn't make it on the video or the audio, because it's kind of weird when we share stuff. Sometimes you can't. Anyway. I, can't, I haven't been able to see your screens for like a while. No, no. Can you hear it, though? I can hear it. OK, so hear this then. Uh, there's this scene right here at the very end of the movie. He's getting introduced kind of like Johnny Carson. Here's Johnny. Um Whenever you introduce somebody, if you watch Late Night, and we all seen a show at least once, you introduce somebody once, maybe a second time, but just watch. Can you see the screen? Or yeah, hear it? I can see okay. it now. Yeah. So. So here he is introducing him as the king of comedy, Pupkin comes out he does his bow the audience is clapping music is playing the camera above it is kind of telling you no notice here, here's another thing notice this is not coming from the tv camera down there i like how it's coming from above kind of oh, like yeah. you seeing it as a spectator yeah like scorsese right, right. is kind of letting you know because he just okay this is the second time he introduces him the, the announcer watch that's twice wonderful who says that that's three and he's just enjoying it just taking it in four times why wonderful five he's just standing there this is on his head, guys. There it is. So there it is. So he and then it just goes away. I honestly think it's uh, it's at the, at least the ending. It didn't really happen. I think he's still in jail. So the, yeah, okay. So that that is what I kind of thought. As I thought it was. So that that that. Yes, I would agree with you, Freddie. Yeah, I think so too. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think um, it's, it's, op- it's open for interpretation. If yeah. You guys uh, think that it's it's uh, not so that it really did happen? Leave a comment. Leave a comment and let us know what you thought. By the way, uh, not ending yet. I just wanted to throw that in there. Um, yeah. So I guess we all agree on that part. If there's one more thing, um, I I want to say. Uh, before we go into what we give it, right? Is that cool? Yeah. Unless you yeah, got yeah. anything else. Okay, so notice when they're about to kidnap Jerry, Sandra's, uh, they're trying to see, is that him? Is that really him? You know, uh, she says something that make, makes a lot of sense. And maybe I looked into it too much, but it says, she said, he says something like, is that him? It looks like him. And she said, if it looks too much like him, it's not really him. It's when it doesn't look like him that it's really him. Mm. This, this, like, 
you know, like uh, we see a lot of comics. We're in the the comedy scene. Uh, but like, have you ever seen like a celebrity and you're like, is that him? Is that really him? Like, what the fuck? Remember yeah, when yeah, we saw yeah. Ray J, Sammy? Yeah. I didn't reckon. I'm like, is that really Ray J? Yeah. I yeah. I remember it's Ray that. J. Uh, let me see his cock. Maybe it is. Ray J. <laughs> and then, then I'll recognize him. Uh, then you start but, sucking it like that lollipop. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, dickhead. Um, the, the movie, the Joker just to kind of it ties it in i'm gonna tie it into this what i just said uh quentin tarantino said something about the movie the joker he doesn't like to talk about uh other movies too much new movies because he doesn't want to either make him like people make people think that it's bad or it's good he doesn't want to influence anybody's thoughts but on this particular movie the joker he said if you don't watch the movie the joker at the movie theater and you just watched it at home on your phone, on a DVD, you just got the hand job. You didn't get the full experience. Mm-hmm. You you traded having a threesome to just a hand job. It's a good hand job, but it's not the full experience. So, did you guys watch the movie The Joker at the movie theaters? Yeah, I saw it twice. Yes. Uh, oh, you saw it twice? Yeah, fuck yeah. I saw it twice as well. The first time I saw it, uh, it was a pretty crazy experience. And I know you know the story, Sam. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. So um, I don't know if I told you, Colin. Maybe I have. Um, we're watching the movie. I'm enjoying the fuck out of it. But at the same time, I'm a little bit on <laughs> at the edge of my seat because I'm a little bit scared that uh, the guy next to us is crazy because he's cackling like the Joker. And it kind of made me feel a little bit weird about that because I'm like, I kept looking over. I'm like, is this guy going to shoot up the place? He, he just scared me. It was just a little like, you know, you know me. You see something, say something. I was a little, <laughs> I was a little close. I was a little close to going, uh, Full bringing Freddy attention. Yeah, I was about to. If you see something, Fred something, what? <laughs> 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 yeah if you oh. see something fret something yeah exactly yeah. that's there's the name of the fucking episode <laughs> <laughs> damn lock that in <laughs> yeah man i was about to fret something right now and uh this guy was like cackling movies over the lights start turning on and lizzie looks at me and she turns around to look over who was sitting next to us three guys and um they're all dressed in pajamas and she looks at me and she's like hey is that and she didn't even finish saying what she said she was gonna say and i i already knew what she was gonna say i'm like no it's not him and and we never said a name i get i get on my phone and i google the person i'm thinking she's thinking and i look over that's why I said the Sandra Bernhardt, if they look too much like him, it's never him. If they don't, it's not him. Well, I'm looking at the guy, one of the guys from the three uh, pajama guys, and I look at my phone, and I have typed in Norm McDonald. I look over. It's fucking Norm McDonald, dude. Damn. Fuck. Norm McDonald was sitting next to us during and you this almost movie ratted thing. him out, you piece of shit. <laughs> fucking cock-sucking, <laughs> lollipop-munching piece of fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's that wild, uh, though. That would have been so awkward, right? If I fucking... Yeah. You're like, just that, guy, no that guy. That <laughs> guy. <laughs> Dude, it didn't look like him. That's, it, it, that's why it stood out to me when she said that when they don't look like him it's when they really am it, when it's really that person and i i looked it up on the google image i'm like holy shit that's him so immediately i'm like yeah yeah but it's it's him we never said his name i mean we're standing next to the guy so it would have been she whispered you know we leave and as soon as we walk out, she's like, oh, my God, that was Norm McDonald. I'm like, yeah, it was fucking Norm McDonald. Holy shit. Is it him? No, it can't be him. And then we're like, let's keep walking down the hallway. And then we waited. And we pulled a Rupert Pumpkin when he passed by me. I, <laughs> I, fucking, I, I went up to him. I'm like, I'm going to talk to him. Let me talk to him. And I go up to him. 
I'm like, excuse me, sir. Are you Norm McDonald? And it, bro, coolest guy ever. He was like, yeah, I am. You know, the, I'm like, I'm a comic. Ah. I live here. I, li- I live here in Vegas. I'm a stand up comic. He's like, where do you perform? And he's so cool. And he was so smart. Like, like he knew how to cut the conversation off. Because mm-hmm. yeah. I, I, I was trying not to talk too much, but he knew what I wanted too. And I didn't, I wasn't even going to ask him. Yeah. He's like, you want a picture? I'm like, yes. <laughs> yes, I want a picture. Of course I want it. It's like him giving me his autograph. Yeah. You know? One day this is going to be worth something. I don't know. And, and he fucking had his, his, um, his friend uh, grab my phone. Um, thank God he took a really great picture and he took a picture of Lizzie and I. And, and there we are with with uh, Norm McDonald in pajamas right after watching the, the Joker. And and he leaves and we're freaking out. This is like to me. I, I've met Dave Chappelle in the past, but it was in the at the comedy store in the, in the green room it was, and it was in the setting. I, we weren't expecting this. It was fucking yeah. bizarre. That is fucking dope. Because I grew up watching him on Saturday Night Live and, you know, watching Dirty Work. You know, I was a big fan, you know, of, of Norm MacDonald. And to to fucking watch The Joker next to him, a, a movie about a, a, a failed stand-up comic or whatever next to a comic, right? And um, a legend. So he leaves. I go to the restroom. I fucking run into him again. Now it's awkward. Yeah, we, that, said, yeah. we said bye and i just see him and his friends and they're 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 going towards the sink as i'm going to the urinal and he points at me and he tells the friend oh look there's freddy <laughs> i'm like hey bye and i just pass by He's i go like, piss oh, God. yeah and there he was talking to his friend they were he talking froze. about the movie it was so fucking awesome oh shit it was yeah. I, can you hear me now yeah Okay, it was so awesome to hear him discuss the movie, how they were talking, and now it made sense. He was like cackling, he was laughing at, like it was making him again. laugh. And Norm was crazy; he didn't give a fuck, dude. He was, I'm telling you, he was laughing like the the crazy Damn. Joker was in the movie Joaquin Phoenix. Damn, that is wild. Yeah, dude, it, it was uh, it was pretty pretty crazy, bro. It was a great experience. Yeah, I mean that sounds dope. But it is funny that you, like, you immediately were like, "Ah, oh, this is weird," and then him to turn to that. Damn, that's yeah. fucking cool. Yeah, and and Freddy the Snitch almost got activated, <laughs> which is pretty bizarre. Damn, this is so fucking funny. Because I've yeah. done it in the past. I've done it where I thought someone had a bomb in their backpack, and you know. Uh, it's failed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so ratings. Yeah. What I have I haven't looked at Ron Tomatoes. Let's look at that afterward, right? All right. So Who wants to go first? I don't. Sammy? I'll go first. You go first. I'll go second. All right. So I gave it a four on uh letterbox. You can follow okay. C Staley seven seven six. Uh, I really did enjoy it, man. At the end of the day, I was like, "Damn, mm-hmm. this is a fucking great movie that really has held the test of time." With everybody being like a celebrity chaser now, you getting all those people that are uh, like the, you. You get the athletes that won't sign autographs for adults because they'll mm. sell them, and they know that they're like, "No, nah, man, like, if you want to." If a kid does it, fine, but but then you see the kids, like the parents near, and it's really just for the parent. So I really felt like it held the test of time, and it's actually a great mm-hmm. movie. It yeah. shows just the craziness that people will go to to be a celebrity. Is that, I mean, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a great rating. Out of what? And, you know, okay. out of five. Um, yeah. and, and I think sometimes when you give something like a three or a four, it doesn't mean you didn't like it. You could enjoy a movie and still give it a shitty rating or, I mean, that's not a, that's not a shitty rating. That's like, um, I would say 80%. Yeah. I'd say 80%. Like I would, I would mm-hmm. really recommend anything. I think above a three I'm recommending 
Yeah. A four, I'm like, guys, watch this movie for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you on that. Um, I I give it a... Are you done explaining? Like yeah, your, yeah. Uh, what? Okay. Yeah. I give it a four as well. Uh, actually, how about this? You can give it a four too, man. I'm not gonna shit. No, no. I wanted to give it a little bit more. Okay. I was gonna I was gonna say four point five because I want to give it ninety percent. I thought it was really good. I thought it, was, but it's not perfect. It has the flaws that I didn't like. Was the part that it is confusing. I think yeah. even back in the day before you, watching the Joker, it's confusing to see uh, to give us a definition of what's really reality and what's not. Um, I know at the end you could, you know we kind of figure it out. We all come and came to the same conclusion that it was in his own head. Uh, that all this crazy shit was happening. He becomes famous for what he did. And who knows? Maybe that's just our, it's definitely just our opinion, right? Yeah. What if you hear Martin Scorsese said, no, he actually did come out and he was famous, you know? Um, I give it a 4.5. I give it a 90% uh, because I the whole him taking her out I was a little confused like you, Colin. Like I was like I was a little confused. Is this really happening? Did he really go to the house, break in with her? Did she really go with him? Um the whole bar scene, uh she kinda recognizes him, kinda doesn't. He just shows up. He hasn't seen this girl since high school. But clearly he's stalking her a little bit. Cause she yeah. knows exactly where she works where to go like everything like that immediately yeah 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 i i I almost gave it a five but it it had those are my little issues i I think i already raved about it throughout the the beginning part of the podcast the middle It, it was great the acting a lot of the a lot of it was amazing um i think it was a little over the top the whole having the whole wall painted with the audience it's like he's living there's one part where he mentions you live in a town home or you know she's talking he's talking about sandra bernhardt she has money he really doesn't how does he yeah. have all that if he's just like some like is the is his mom rich did he have an inheritance and i mean it's pretty pimped out that fucking basement is pimped the fuck out dude yeah absolutely. so i think that was a little over the top you know, the the uh, again. The I felt part, like it showed his obsession in it. Oh, for sure, for sure, it showed his his obsession. Um, but look at the Joker. Um, again, the Joker's inspired by this, but they did a better job when he's sitting in a couch, yeah, just true. in the living room, just pretending it's in his head. They he had a fucking studio, which is cool. You could have a studio. People have podcast studios. Because people could do whatever the fuck they want. It's just that still to this day, I don't know how I could fucking get wallpaper to cover up a whole giant high ceiling basement wall like yeah 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 he has a giant high ceiling basement what the fuck um those were my issues i i definitely felt some people might be like oh well you just be negative or whatever but yeah fuck you i am being negative because it that's the imperfection and imperfection is imperfection part of it It, it's perfect perfection imperfection makes perfect things perfect to be honest yeah. Sammy got uh, yelled at by some guy this like two weeks ago about his hatred of um, people getting shot in Reservoir Dogs <laughs> yeah he did that was hella funny yeah. oh <laughs> I, I would like to ask Sammy when it um, I, I don't know if I was going to say anything else um, oh yeah the part where I, I mentioned it earlier People are just rushing to go up to him after his late night show. He's he rushes into his car. It's a little over the top. People being fans of his. I I see. I could see that for like a Michael Jackson, um, a singer that's coming out of their concert. But like somebody like David Letterman uh, coming out of the late show, and then people or John even Johnny Carson. I wouldn't see people rushing to a comic like that. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. I can't, right? It's it's a little again over the top, um, but yeah, that's why I give it four point five. I recommend it. Great fucking movie, legendary movie, right. and I really like how Robert De Niro 
he throughout his acting career it's he's always accepted these roles or um maybe he's seeked them as well but it's like he loves comedy he likes stand-up comedy he you know know, raging bull he becomes a stand-up right oh yeah 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 yeah. right right towards the end he uh becomes try stand-up sammy and i saw a movie uh, at the theaters when you came out to visit do you remember the comedian sammy yeah the comedian yeah 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 i enjoyed it maybe i'm biased because i like robert de niro but and i saw a lot of comics from yeah me too i liked it it was good yeah and now you know the king of comedy uh the joker he's a comic so i think that's four that you know and then he's pretty good at fucking comedic acting look at meet the fuckers you know it was fucking yeah great when he made that switch to go from mobster to that it was like wow yeah, yeah. i recommend it um sammy Give it, I give it a rating. I give and it a four. Give it a four. But I also want to know at one point, let me know, how was the acting? Because I know you're very big on the acting. <laughs> no, the- <laughs> <laughs> there's no fucking gunshot scenes and shit. There's no. Fu- <laughs> Did Sandra Bernhardt act the right way when she got slapped the fuck out? When she got Dana White? Oh my God, you got Dana White, bro. She fell to the ground, bro. I thought he was going to stick his gun up her butt. Gun up the butt. Yeah. Challenge. She popped right right up, though. She popped, I mean. Yeah. But it was believable. It was like. She popped right up. Oh, what's that? No, go ahead. She popped right up, but he still had. It seemed like he knocked her out or something because he had time to leave and then she runs after him naked or in her. Yeah, Which they like, don't ever it, address. It seems like she just gets away. He just gets away. Like, yeah. yeah. Sorry, like we Sammy, don't hear we there. don't hear Jerry's or Sandra's story after that. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but I think that part might be on purpose from Scorsese to kind of lead you to believe that he made this or you know. But anyway, yeah. Sammy four four point oh four stars. Talk yeah, to me, like baby. It. it was. It was good. It was um, really good. Besides a little bit of like transitioning flaws, <laughs> but it was just stuff that I noticed. It's not like I really cared. Like it was just like, okay, I, I noticed yeah. it was a little weird. Um, yeah. But no, I liked it. It drew me in. Um, it was one of those movies where like I was on my phone a little bit, and then I'm like, oh fuck, I have to put my phone down because I have to. Man, I think that was the good thing and the bad thing about it was mm. that it, it really drew my attention, but then also it drew my attention because I was kind of confused on what the fuck was going on and what yeah. was real and what was. And I had to rewind a couple parts where I was like, I don't, I can't really tell. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, no, the acting was great. I felt like it portrayed what it needed to portray. Is that I? I don't know if I'm saying that right, but yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was good. It was good. I really, it held up, and that was the most important thing for me was that it held up the way it did. Like I could watch this now and still be like, "Oh shit, I get what's going on." I don't, you know. Yeah, yeah. Where it's like with the older movies, sometimes you're like, Ugh. "Like, I yeah. guess this is a bit unbelievable." Yeah, yeah, I get exactly what you're saying. I feel like a, like, I know I'm a, I know I'm a millennial, but I feel like a real millennial who doesn't know what a fucking cassette is could watch this and be like oh i get what's going on mm-hmm. yeah no that's good bro uh yeah good movie overall such a good movie that dc comics after shitty movie after shitty movie they said hey let's remake the king of comedy but just name it the joker because it's okay. pretty much it's pretty much a re- and, and it finally it hit which makes me wonder now that there there's talks, I think not even talks. I think they're gonna there's gonna be a Joker too. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. They just posted a um, a picture. So real quick before I'm gonna find this other one, I'm gonna let well, you. Well, is, is it? Well, it makes me wonder if there's gonna be a Joker too. Now that they're already used up and remade a story from Taxi and all, what are they gonna make Joker two about? Is it gonna yeah. be a dog shit DC movie now? Oh yeah. Is it going to be interesting? You're right. Is it just going to be just another hog shit fucking nonsense from them? It, they they might have it might have been better to just leave it alone. It was yeah. a great movie. You did a good job ripping off Taxi and <laughs> being a comedy. Because it's one thing to be inspired, 
And and there's another thing where you're just like this. You're okay now. You took multiple scenes, and it's a remake at this point. Yeah. What's Lady that? Gaga. Yeah. Oh so shit. She's, so she's gonna be in the second one. That's a, it's just a scene oh. that just popped up. I'm gonna see if I can zoom in on a little bit. Oh. So what do you think? Does that does that mean it's gonna be a dog shit movie because it's Lady Gaga or, I mean. How do you guys feel about that? I felt like she did good last time. I didn't, and um, I don't know. Uh, Her acting's not House of Gucci. She was in something else. That movie with um, Bradley Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper. Something Star. Yes. Yeah, I thought she was a good actress. Yeah, Star is born. Um, I thought she's pretty good. She's very talented. Um, that was well done. And American Horror Story, she did a season. It was pretty so good. So I think she could definitely be a great. But yeah, you're right. Because of that, is that going to be? Is that going to be a bad? Is it because they've taken everything now? Is that going to be a bad movie? Yeah, you shot your load. You know? Yeah, now you're just like, whoa. Um. Yeah, you're right. There's nothing about it. Well, this is coming out uh, October 2024. Wow. Oh, okay. So it's got to, I mean, they're probably filming it right now. Yeah. Um, and then. I it's good. I, I, I always like DC Comics. Um, yeah, but the movies are out. dog shit. The movies have been terrible, for sure. So this. Really have. Sammy, if you can see the screen, Freddie, I assume you can. Yeah, I can. This is the description for Network. And I've never seen this movie, but I've heard great things about it. And I would definitely be down to watching this. I'm down. Network cynically exploits a deranged former anchor. It's really small for on my screen. Can you read Uh, it? Former anchor's. Uh, ravings and revelations about the news media for its own profit, but finds that his message may be difficult to control. Oh, okay. I'm down. Uh, Me uh, too. That could be one of them. Hold on. Wow. Yeah, that's a good idea, bro. That's a good one. And and on our our text message in case we come up with a different one too, but I, I'm down for that one. If you guys are down, yeah, oh, down. yeah, hell yeah. Um, I I think if we do Joker in the future, um, it'll be it'll be like doing a movie review for this one though. Yeah, because it, it was just pretty much identical, if anything. Yeah. Yeah, I'm interested. Um, if we wind up watching this movie and it's just the same thing as King of Comedy, then yeah, definitely change it. But uh, you brought that up, and I was like, oh, you know, I've never seen that movie, but that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, that we haven't seen it. I think it's a good idea to watch it. Um, another thing, okay, since we mentioned the Joker so much on this one, do you think the Joker was better than King of Comedy? Are you down to give it a rating? Hmm. Oh, oh, oh man it was so good for what it was for me like um for being a dc comic movie and just kind of breaking through just your regular fucking hulk smash type mm-hmm. of fucking it was very thoughtful and but now you know and now that i see where it was inspired from mm-hmm. um it's actually pretty cool um honestly like you know I, I do get what you said they ripped it off but it was really good and um yeah. fuck my, my phone's gonna die oh shit sure. but um oh no my, there, head, it's my headphones your headphones okay yeah because well let's yeah we'll, we'll we'll start wrapping this up we just hit two hours but i had to plug in my laptop <laughs> my shit was fucking oh dying. shit yeah 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 now, um, so Joker, yeah, I mean, re watching this, I was like, damn, this is essentially, yeah, this. I, I like that the Joker could be by itself just a movie. I mean, uh, they did the DC tie-in. I thought it finished really well. Yeah, but it didn't have to have the DC tie-in. It could, if you don't know anything about any of the 
anything about it. Like, you don't know anything about DC Comics, and you watch The Joker, you went, oh, shit, all right, this is a cool movie. This guy went a yeah. little wacky, but you, you wouldn't think anything of it. Knowing, yeah. knowing like, it, it, you have these Easter eggs, and you're like, oh, shit, there's that, there's that. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. What do, you, uh, what do you guys give it out of five stars? Four. I gave it, I mean, just on Letterboxd, I gave it a four. The Joker? Okay. Yeah, I yeah. really enjoyed it. How about you, Sammy? I give it like a 4.5. Yeah, I give it a 5. Damn. I, I, th- I thought it was, even though it was a ripoff, not so much a ripoff, um, oh, shit. Om- homage or whatever. Yeah, my, my headphones died. Uh-oh. Can you hear us through your, um, through, your fo- through your phone so we could finish this off? Can you hear us on there? Yeah. Okay, cool. We can hear you. Sounds different, but <laughs> we'll have yeah. to, we'll have to uh, do it for at least a few minutes. Um, so even though the Joker was like an homage or whatever, it was better. They f- they fixed it. I think they fixed the parts that I had with the the Kina comedy, the over the top stuff. I think they they fixed the part of um, what's in the what's when you when you get to the end of the movie of the Joker, you're like. Oh, that was that was all in his head. Oh, when he kidnaps the 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 neighbor that supposedly he was dating, going out on dates, and oh, it was all in his head. That made it pretty clear. So I, yeah. I thought the Joker was definitely a better movie, and the tie-in with the new storyline that he might be related to Bruce Wayne. I'm like, oh yeah, oh, like, yeah. I thought that pretty... was really well done. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. My maybe I'll bump mine. I'm gonna hold it, but I, I agree with what you're saying. Absolutely, I absolutely agree with what you're saying. I I'm think just afraid was. that the next movie is gonna be shitty. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a problem. I hope I'm wrong, and that'd be cool if I get to watch it with Norm again. <laughs> you're stupid. Maybe you will. Damn! Did I just? Intended. Oh shit! Did, did I just wish I was dead? God yeah. damn it! I meant like him showing up at the theater like a ghost, or <laughs> yeah. I'll edit that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Um, uh, no, in still, honor that's... of Norm, whether this movie is good or not, I'm gonna go watch this movie. And don't in snitch honor. on me. Was that? Don't snitch don't on anybody. Snitch on... Oh, how about okay. that? I, I no matter how bad it is, just do it for Norm because you didn't do it. You didn't snitch on him. There you go. I promise. Imagine if you blow up because you you didn't say you didn't see something. Fred something. Damn. <laughs> you get shot up and you see like a guy with a gun, but you're like, no, I can't. That's, I have to that should, work. And then you really out. go and watch it with Norm. Because <laughs> you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Dude, that should oh. be a t shirt if you see something, Fred something. You should, mean, yeah. That, that is your first merch. Yeah, that's your tag, bro. If you see something, oh. Fred something. Um, I'm going to show up to the movie theater in pajamas. In honor so of I was gonna God. say with that, definitely when you guys come out here, we gotta pick a movie in theaters and all go watch it. Let's fucking go, bro. That's fucking hey, dope. Let's that, do that. that. Like with you saying that that Tarantino thing, I was like that. That is definitely because we can get. Oh yeah, that's my uh, that's my first <laughs> merch shirt. <laughs> yeah, cocktail blocker. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, we could do like a before kind of talk about it, what we see, what we think about it. Don't watch the trailer at all, and then go watch the movie and then talk about yeah. it. So definitely, I love it. Early really August two thousand twenty four. Then you <laughs> <laughs> don't have to be Joker too. I mean, we could fucking be here. Damn, Sammy definitely does. Sammy's so scared of Philly now. Nah, nah, I ain't scared of Philly, bro. I grew up in the jungles. Are you kidding me? Of Reno. <laughs> jungles of Mexico and El Salvador. Sun, <laughs> uh, Sun, Sun Valley. Yeah. All right. Um, I totally forgot what I was going to say, but I love the idea of when we go to Philly. That's one of our favorite things to do. Sammy, when Sammy comes to visit, we'll go watch a movie like at the end okay, of bro. our weekend or when I go to Reno. Oh, yeah, we yeah we always go watch a movie somewhere. Yeah, we make love after, and it's pretty great. Yeah, damn, that sounds love making must be beautiful. Well, you yeah. saw how 
sucking on that lollipop. That's what I'm saying. Mm. <laughs> That's where I get my skills, bitches. Hey, yeah, man. Thank uh, you guys again. This was fun. You guys had fun? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. bro. This, is, this is a lot of fun. I, I was go really check- looking. F- dead. What happened? I got to go check on my children. I think they're dead. Don't say that, dude. <laughs> they were crying Damn. for like two hours. I could hear them. <laughs> Damn. Oh, my God. And here you are just uh, with this delusion of being on a podcast <laughs> that's going to blow up like Joe Rogan. <laughs> you fucking delusional piece of shit. Go fuck yourself, dude. It's really quiet now because I could hear them before. Now I can't fucking hear them at all. <laughs> I'm like, I wonder oh, what. Dude. Oh, my God. All right. Well, then I'm going to letterbox C Staley 776 and Instagram Colin S21. Follow me. Um, that's all my plugs. Beautiful. Sammy? Dope. Drummer Boy X24 on Instagram and uh, Twitter and Letterbox, And then Sammy Solari on Facebook. Fuck yeah. FreddyKorea.com. You get all my social media on there. And subscribe. Thanks for the invite podcast on YouTube, audio, anywhere right. you can get your subscribe. podcast. Thank you, guys. Share it with people. Share it with all your friends. Watch it when you're sleeping. Just listen to it. Please. Fuck yeah.